Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome to On The Mark. I uh, saw the last couple of videos from James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, and um, <clears throat> the um, they're basically all about the deep state and how the deep state is working against Trump and the resistance and all that's coming from the inside. And one of the things that kept coming up was the fact that all of these employees in our government, they're breaking the law by being politically active. And time and time again, each one of these is politically active with the DSA, the Democratic Socialists of America. So I wanted to make a quick video because I know that a lot of times, you know, we don't have time to look into all this, uh, you know, by ourselves and read all this stuff. And I know that for me, at least, it's easier to have it read to me and sort of highlighted um, who these people are from their own words, from their own website. And uh, I looked around for something on YouTube and not finding anything that was detailed, I decided to go ahead and, and make one myself. So just real quick, <clears throat> let me show you a little bit of the video that uh, Project Veritas put out. It's like the level of resistance movement. Inside? Is like, is the resistance just your friend? Or is it like a bunch of people? It's like a bunch of people. Oh, okay. Um, and then there's a lot of talk about like how we can resist from inside. Yeah. And there's like a lot of kind of like pushback. Like what's kind of lucky with the DOJ, we can't like buy Yeah. We have a number who works in the people that distribute food stamps. And they can like take that away. And they're just doing what they do. So anyway, that's uh, sort of the intro to it. And if you were following along, they're basically DOJ workers and uh, they're using federal funds. Uh, if you watch the video, you notice that one of them is using the, the federal government's ne LexisNexis uh, username and password to be able to find uh, addresses of people they want to you know, go against. Uh, it's a freaking nightmare. So who is the DSA? Democratic Socialists of America and what do they stand for? Well, I'm going to basically just do a quick rundown here on what I've seen in their on their website. Um, here are the current campaigns that they have: uh, Medicare for all, and this is interesting because they came out recently with a with a study supposedly that says that if you know we do Medicare for all, we're actually going to save money. Uh, which is, of course, a lie. I debunked that in one of my previous videos. They also came out with a poll that said, you know what, Americans, uh, by and large, want Medicare for all. And uh, that's interesting because when you ask Americans, the same sort of polling demographic, uh, how do you feel about single-payer health care? The numbers are actually reversed. Rather than 80% of the people agreeing with it, 30% of the people agree with it. And that's because of the way the question is worded. Medicare for all does not explain to people what they mean is single payer. They mean socialized, fully socialized health care. And so now they, they're calling it Medicare for all because we're used to Medicare, right? There is Medicare out there. And so, okay, just expanding it so everybody can have a piece, no problem. But they don't explain that the idea is to go ahead and do away with private insurance and just make it a single-payer system. Another campaign they got going right now is strong unions. And uh, I love the way they put this. I'll read it out to you because if you're anything like me, you listen to videos more than watch. They say capitalism pits us against each other and workplaces are fundamentally authoritarian unless workers can self-organize and build collective power. Now. This is very important. I'm going to explain to you why when we get into their bylaws in just a minute. They are fighting against the authoritarian nature of capitalism and workplaces. It continues, this is why people build unions and why employers undermine them. 
It is also why the capitalists and as a class consistently work to undermine unions and promote narratives about unions that frame them in an unnecessarily undemocratic or ineffective. Fact is, they are undemocratic. They are undemocratic, and there's nothing more authoritarian than a union. You just take a look at what happened with the whole uh, this, uh, this court case where people said, you know what, maybe I don't want to pay to the unions. And the unions actually went to court to force uh, all teachers to pay into the union. Not only that, but the unions decide who the union is going to support. So if you're paying your union dues and the unions want to support the Democrat, but you're a Trump supporter, you can't divert part of your dues to, to the candidate you like. Unions are by their nature undemocratic and authoritarian. But anyway, they want to strengthen unions. And uh, we all know where that leads. Just about every unionized uh, worker group is a freaking disaster. You look at the teachers' unions. And I know that we're supposed to say the teachers are uh, underpaid and overworked. Bullcrap. Teachers are way overpaid. When you calculate all the time off they get and you calculate all the vacation time, these people are making seventy or $80,000 a year. So don't give me that crap about it underpaid. The fact is that they're paid too much no matter what. Our schools are failing miserably. You can't fire a teacher, so if they're lazy or what have you, they stay in their position forever. They got job security, retirement plans. In the state of Florida, we had 1.6% fire rate for teachers. 1.6% of all 26,000 teachers in the state, only 1.6 of them got fired. Now, that, that fire rate doesn't exist anywhere else. Just about any other industry, any other place you look at it, people get fired at a much higher rate than 1.6%. But you can't fire the teachers. So what are you going to do? Anyway, that's what they're, they're currently, uh, the, the campaigns are currently running. I want to go into the Constitution and bylaws. I'm going to try to make this video as quick as possible. And you guys, of course, can check them out. I'll put the link to their website in the description so that you can see all this stuff for yourself, read it in, uh, in, in greater detail. So the purpose of the DSA is we are socialists because we reject an economic order based on private profit, alienated labor, gross inequalities of wealth and power, discrimination based on race, sex, sexual orientation, gender expression, disability status, age, religion, and national origin, and brutality and violence in defense of the status quo. So, are these freaking people crazy? They reject an economic order based on private profit. That is the only economic order that works. Capitalism is the single greatest economic order, economic process, philosophy in the history of mankind. Capitalism has brought more people out of poverty, has allowed for the exponential growth of the human population on this earth, like nothing else in the world. And the understanding that being motivated by profit not only is a good thing, but it's a beneficial thing to all. Actually, the notion of being motivated by profit uh, discounts and shows how wrong the rest of this statement actually is. If you are motivated by profit, you will not alienate your laborers because you need them. There is no nicer boss than the one that understands that he can't make a profit if he's having too high of a turnover. So labor is not alienated. The moment that your workers feel like they're not being paid enough or they can do better elsewhere and they're going to leave, that employer get, listens up real quick because the profit is the motive. You know when uh, labor is alienated? Labor is alienated when the government is in charge of the industry. That's the time that labor is alienated. When it doesn't matter how much turnover you have. It doesn't matter 
if every one of the employees at the DMV is a slothful, lazy bastard that doesn't get his butt off a chair to make a photocopy. That's when all of a sudden, labor is alienated. Gross inequalities of wealth and power. Again, if profit is the motive, then there are no gross inequalities of wealth and power. Everybody gets paid what they're willing to accept and what the market will bear. Discrimination based on race, sex, etc. That doesn't happen in the capitalist system. As we see, the moment somebody, for religious reasons, doesn't want to bake someone a cake, that place is basically tried to make, make ba bankrupt. If we heard of any restaurant owner who said, we don't want Jews in here, that place would be shut down within a week because nobody would set foot in the place except to perhaps spit on the floor and protest. The profit motive is a very, very good thing. And it ensures the most humane society. The purpose of these people continues. And they say, We are socialists because we share a vision of humane social order on popular control of resources and production, economic planning, equitable distribution, feminism, racial equality, and non-oppressive relationships. These people call themselves socialists, but they're communists. Popular control of resources and production. That is the communist manifesto, people. That is the communist platform. And why are we going through this? Let's not forget. We're going through this because we have admitted members of this organization all throughout the DOJ, all throughout our government. These people are disgusting communists, bastards. They're going to destroy our country. And we've got Anastasia Ocasio-Cortez or whatever her name is. Card-carrying member. Bernie Sanders, card-carrying member. And more and more of our elected Democrats in office are tiptoeing and some running their way into the arms of the Democratic Socialists of America. You know, Chunky Yogurt and uh, Katie Lang from Secular Talk, they uh, started the Justice Democrats. And I made a series on, on their idea. And, uh, and I thought that was radical. And I, and I laughed at it and I said, it's going to fail. But man, I didn't think they'd be this radical. I mean, it's only been a, a year, maybe two, since the Justice Democrats launched. And look how far they've gone. All right, let me get through some of this and let me hurry up uh, because it's getting late here and this video is getting long. So uh, here they have uh, how to become a member. Uh, you got to sign uh, application. Uh, applicants, uh, you have to be part of the local organization and uh, you can become part of the national organization. Section four is interesting. Members may be expelled by either the national or local organization. For a member to be expelled nationally, two-thirds vote of a national political committee shall be necessary. Criteria for expulsion is described in the bylaws. All right, let's take a look. Uh, national conventions. All this stuff is how they handle their conventions, how they, hire, how they pick their officers and their staff. Come on, let's get to the bylaws. Ah, bylaws. Section 1. Applicants for membership in the organization shall agree with the principles of the organizations and pay dues. Remember that thing I told you? Keep in mind, they talk about how they're against authoritarians. In order to be a member of this organization, you must agree with its principles. In other words, they want no dissent. You can't think... You know what? Mostly I agree, but in this, you know, let's say uh, universal health care, I disagree. No, if you disagree with any part of their principles, any part of their platform, you cannot be a member. Think about that. 
Think about the weak, soft underbelly of this organization that they can't stomach even a little dissent, even a little uh, debate. It's got to be a monolith or they won't have it. So uh, members will receive organizational outreach publication. Members are encouraged to participate in political activities and education or re-education or brainwashing. New members will receive a membership card. Uh, let's see. This is all sort of crappy. Uh, members can be expelled if they are found to be in substantial disagreement with the principles or policies of the organization or if they consistently engage in undemocratic, disruptive behavior, or if they are under the discipline of any self-defined democratic centrist organization. Members facing expulsion must receive written notice of charges against them and must be given the opportunity to be heard before the NPC or subcommittee thereof appointed for the purpose of considering the expulsion. Listen to this, people. Listen to this. Our government is filled to the brim with these communists calling themselves democratic socialists. Their own rules state that they will not accept dissent, that, which basically ensures that they will be racing towards the furthest leftist border that they can reach. They will not accept any dissenting opinions they will not have any debate you're either with us or against us and if you are found to have any substantial disagreement and remember these are the same people who find it substantial find it that it should be a an offense punishable by jail time or death to misgender someone these same people are saying that if there's a substantial disagreement with the principles or the policies of the organization, you'll be kicked out. Basically ensuring that the DSA will do nothing but become more and more radical over time. This is a very scary organization, folks. Very scary organization. And they are infiltrating all parts of our government. They are being elected one after the other. And I refuse to believe that the people who voted for Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez or Bernie Sanders, I refuse to believe that the majority of them have read this document. I am willing to bet my balls that not 10% of them understand what these people stand for. They are authoritarians. They're monsters, communists. They are in league and in line with the f political philosophy that has more bodies piled up than all wars put together. You know why they love red so much? Because of the, 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 the gallons, the rivers, the oceans of blood on the hands of all these communist and socialist scum. So maybe what I need to do is delve into this website, dissect it more closely, use this video as perhaps an intro to who the DSA is, and then uh, maybe we can maybe we can wake some folks up, maybe. Can't wait to see this video. I don't know if you noticed here, but they're obviously pushing the diversity's our strength angle, huh? But not diversity of thought. Not that. That'll get you kicked out. Well. Thanks, you guys, for listening. If uh, you're wearing headphones, I'm sorry I yelled. I'm sure that hurt. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next one.